Hi and welcome to How About Them Danes, a new show where we put the spotlight on Danish writers, this time from Milano San Remo. With me is uh, Chris Bjergo, who is uh, known as a really good preview writer. And uh, Chris, tell us a little bit about the roof and the weather and all the details. Yeah, um, yeah, we are here at the first monument of the season uh, from Milano San Remo. Um, it's a race some people love, others hate, um, because it's it's quite dull uh, for the first uh, long time. But then we get to the climbs, uh, Cipresa and Pocchio, uh, the descent, the run in, and then it's probably, I would say, half an hour of very, very, very exciting racing. Uh, because we have a lot of climbers here this year, Bogatia Rocklich. We have fast sprinters, Jakobsen. Um, what will it be? A sprint, a small group. You never really know with Milano San Remo. And that's that's what I, why I like it quite a lot. So yeah, here we have um, the last uh, 27 kilometers. We start with the Cipresa, um, the longer of the two climbs. Um, and I think, that's the point this year where we will see some teams put the hammer down simply to make it as hard as possible for the sprinters. We have a, quite a tricky descent after the Cipressa, a valley where we normally see some riders just go all the way back to the peloton, just sit in the draft, save energy, and then uh, come swinging um, by the rest of the peloton just before Pokio, which we'll have up next. You know it well. It's a, it's a climb. It's not that hard, but you know, after two hundred and eighty kilometers, it's quite tough. <laughs> uh, the tricky descent and the flat run in to the finish line. And as you can see, I put up here a, a small graph of the direction they're going. They're going primarily west or southwest. And when we get to the weather, you will see that uh, that means we have a, a tailwind, quite a strong one, for this area. Here we have it, the Cipresa. Um, I'm just going to move the camera just a tiny bit so we can see the uh, the gradients. 5.5 kilometers at 4.2. It's not that hard, but it's harder than the Bokio. And we normally see some teams try to, to pace here, you know, try to isolate some of the riders. Uh, but it's very rare, rare. We see a group or a move from here going all the way to the finish. And we have the Pokio. Um, as you can see at the bottom of it, kind of like swings up. You kind of want to have a good position before going into the corner. Um, and then we have the switchbacks. And after the last switchback, we have the little plateau. And that's when you know something's about to happen. After that, we have the uh, short, deep section of 8% and that's usually where the move goes and I think that's where the move is going to go to this year. Mm. We have the descent here as I mentioned it's quite tricky a uh, lot of switchbacks uh, we often have some some riders out front sometimes it's three riders sometimes it's 10 riders then we have a chasing peloton who wants a sprint. Uh, I would say given this descent it's it's better to be few than many um simply because you can really if you're a good descender you can really dive into those corners and be much harder back in the peloton that's why you often see the front group often gaining just a few seconds on the the popular. also because the sprinters teams they have been uh decimated a bit uh, they're not uh, organized anymore they need to get back to the front will pull how many riders do you have how many do they have um and so it goes from the bottom to the finish, um, as I said, with a tailwind, uh, which means a late move is likely. Um, and we'll just talk about, we already, I mentioned it briefly, who wants to pace here? I think UAE will do it for Bogaccia. Uh, the harder, the better. Jumbo Visma will do it for Roglic and Wout van Aert. And Ineos will do it for Pitcock and Hader. Those are the three best teams. And they want to get rid of the sprinters. Philipson is currently on the start list. Jakobsen is. Um, Mas Peterson is also here. He's quicker than Rob van Aert. We'll get to that. They have to try and put the hammer down and make it as hard as possible. That's their best uh, shot of winning for all those three teams. 
And we have the Pokio, same team, so the usual suspects. They want to drop Matt Peterson, our beloved Dane. Um, the question is, will they do it? What do you think, uh, Peter? Can they drop Matt I Peterson? I, no, no, I don't think they can. Not on the Pokio. Okay. But, you know, normally it might be a little bit too long for him, 3.5, but there are flat sections, as you yeah. said, just before he park. And he's quite good at positioning, but also his team isn't, we, we're not sure how strong his team will be right. No. Yeah, we're so, recording uh, before the official start lists uh, are out. And I want to apologize because normally I give some people crap for it, but I mean, it's the day before a monument and we have a lot of uh, illness in the peloton. Um, and, you know, uh, one time I just had to, I couldn't wait. I couldn't resist doing a preview without the start list being out. Um, so let's talk a bit about the the dynamics here of the Pokio, yep. the express idea. Yep. We'll be at the front after Pokio. Um, and perhaps you could discuss back and forth. Um, I think that Wout van Aert, Pogaccia, Bordich, and Ms. Peterson will be at the front group uh, at the split that happens there. And I think Pitcock, Sagan, Sankar, Matthews, perhaps Kwiatkowski, and Mahoric should be there too. What do you okay. think? Um, do you agree? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Somewhat. Um, I, I had my doubts about Rocket because I like Christoph the port too. But the way he rode was it yesterday in Dinan. Mm -hmm. It was really good. He is ready. He's ready yeah. to go. And and he was also good in in Paris. So yeah, no that. But I don't know about Peter Sagan. Um, people have been telling me that ah, he's just nice and easy preparing for the big big races. But uh, does he have? the class to win anymore i'm not so sure he has uh this used to be one of my favorite writers and he he's changed his, his way of writing right yeah. but he could be a guy who could try to let move why not yeah yeah that's triple triple world champion he, he's a superstar so. yeah he is really um but, i'll get i'll get to why i think peter second will be up there um Am I missing someone here? I know you have a special love yeah, for I, Spanish yeah, rider. Yeah, yeah. I, actually, I have two. The one is Alex Aramburu. Yeah. He uh, was uh, seventh uh, last year and the year before that. And that means he made the group, the selection, uh, yeah. last year. Uh, three years ago was that Barfanada and Ayla Felit in the Super Sprint. That's mm. what it is. Yeah. I think. Uh, yeah, he was just in the, in the, in the main group sprint there, I think. But yeah. I, I think he should be able to go. The plan is pretty good for him and he's a good descender we saw that when he won the the two of the best country um so you, see, you can put out some really good power yeah and when you come down at, at the bottom after the descent it's like a slingshot yeah you know, it's like a thing right you get shot out of it and and yeah. he could be one guys with sun Kao. <laughs> yeah uh, yeah and personally i i kind of hope that golden greg van avermaat will uh will surprise us a little bit and and maybe join join the party yeah yeah. yeah, I mean, why not? He's he's got the experience. He has done this race. I can't correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's was it 14 times or something like that um, already. So he should know the route. I mean, most of the time <laughs> it's the same, uh, but he hasn't had any really good results yet. But he's got the nose for it, and he does look half bad at the moment. So I I could definitely see Aaron Buru. Perhaps I'm being a bit too harsh on him since he made the uh, the splits the last two times and um golden greg i mean why not he, he's got a nose for those finals i just i'd love to see it right uh, um he, he's won so many big races yeah won the the golden hel helmet and um and just you know has been maybe the best classic riders uh, of the 10 yeah. maybe yeah one of them one of them for yeah, sure. But one of them, yeah, one of them. Yes, absolutely. But otherwise, no, there's not really any names that that I think should be there. Um, but I'm sure there will be a bigger group than this. I think there will be a bigger group. How many? How many do you think will be in the front group after the Pokio? 
Oh, let's go with like 12, maybe. 12? I think that's... So, yeah. yeah. 12, 12 I agree. Sorry. I agree. I think, yeah, some perhaps a little less. I don't think it will be a bit bigger than 12, but I definitely yeah. think 8 to 12, I mean, really depends on how much power Pogaccia he can... Uh, he can put in the pedals. Perhaps it will be even smaller uh, than yeah. uh, than we anticipate, uh, but we'll have to see. But you 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 don't think Pogacar will try an all-out attack on the Sepeta? I think the team will put the hammer down, make it as hard as possible before the Pokio, and mm -hmm. then his best chance of winning is attack on the Pokio, and. We'll get to Pogaccia, but let's just talk about him just for a, a brief moment. I mean, he's, he's a very good rider. Um, and the Pokio, it's not that steep of a climb for him to drop simply everyone. I simply doubt he can drop everyone. But if he can get in a group perhaps with five people, his chances are far better if it's than if it's um, 12 people. I mean, we've seen him sprint. He almost beat Wout van Aert for the uh, silver medal at the Olympics last year after a long day. I mean, he yep. is he is very quick uh, on a flat finish, and I don't think a lot of people have realized that yet. Uh, he's going to be very, very difficult to beat in a small group, uh, and he knows it too. But I think he would prefer uh, a group of four people. Uh, that would be better for him. Mm -hmm. We, we we saw Julian Alaphilippe uh, win it from from a group also a couple of years ago too mm. same and and we've seen Pogaccia is faster than yeah. uh, Julian Alaphilippe yeah I, I think, so I, I think so, yeah. he's violent when he when he pushes those pedals it's it's a joy to watch I, I would, personally I think he's one of the best I've ever seen maybe yeah best. yeah um, just briefly go over the weather here um, gonna move the camera just a tiny bit more. And we have quite strong winds near the coast. And they start up in Milano to the north and the wind will be lighter there. It's gonna be a nice cross tailwind all the way down to the coast. And then we have eight meters per second. Um, that's quite a lot. It's enough for echelons. Um, we saw echelons in Paris Nice um, with five meters per second. But that was, you know, very open terrain. I have been on Google Maps from almost from um, the start of the coast to the finish in San Remo. It's an uh, area with um, a lot of vegetations and a lot of uh, cliffs and climbs and trees. I simply find it very, very unlikely that we are going to see echelons. But at the same time, it will play a role. Because, I mean, if it's not eight meters per second, perhaps it'll feel more like five, six meters per second, which is going to be still be hard, you know, but not enough for echelons. The terrain is not, is not good enough for it. And it means that the wind direction, as they move further south towards the finish, that they will have a tailwind, both on the Cipressa and on Pokio and all the way to the line. So that means it's going to be more inviting for the climbers, such as Pogaccia, to attack because he won't have a harsh headwind and people will be able to sit on his wheels. It's not a steep climb, so you still benefit a bit from the draft. Um, and a tailwind sprint, which I think is good for Mass Peterson because he, I mean, he see the 300 meters banner here and he's just he just launches he, he doesn't care and with a nice tailwind it's, it's going to be very hard to catch but it also means when we come down in the city after the descent of Pokio that we can see an attack and with a strong tailwind it is going to be very different different difficult to catch that guy sorry for mumbling a little bit um, so yeah the weather it both it favors the the climbers I would say. It favors one who wants a late attack and it finish. It's, it's good for a rider like Mess Peterson, who loves to attack early and sorry, sprint early. But also maybe a guy like, and I forgot to add him before when you asked me, Philip mm. Ogana, mm. if they don't use him up on the podium to set pace, which they did last year and got a lot of flight forward, 
he could be he, he's, he should be the most powerful guy one second kick gone you're never going to see him again yeah it's one of those right. riders definitely yes. who can who can make the move we saw it with Stoyven last year um and, and San Kao trying to follow so a strong classic rider someone who has good time trial capabilities it's definitely it suits them too and let's talk a bit about the outsiders. We briefly yeah. mentioned him. We have our very own Dane, Sankar Andersen. Yeah. Um, you have high hopes for him, Peter, I know. I yeah, have yeah. too. Very, very high hopes. He's a, a grand finisher, right? He's, he's a big finisher. He, he can send, he, can, well, he has to know, knows for these moments. Yeah. And uh, he can slingshot himself from the bottom of the Tokyo. He yeah. has really good. Yeah. Last year he pulled Steuben to the line and Steuben said thank you please and said yes I will. Yeah. Um, and and maybe um, maybe he was just too tired to really think and just okay yeah. I'm just gonna go to the podium that's fine yeah. but we saw him in in Paris and he was well, he was fifth on the last stage yeah that's amazing man on the colleagues um, yeah him, him and Kung came in fifth and sixth sixth right yeah yeah that's, yeah. Uh, you're in good shape if you do that yeah and, a, and you can handle the cold and, and the wind and stuff yeah so. on a rainy yeah rainy cold uh windy day uh with thoughts of climbing it's a fantastic result um i yeah. really have been time that well before no 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 and as you said definitely his his move and it it's it's almost destined um he will attack at the bottom of the Pokemon. He will go all out. Um, it's almost written in the stars. Um, we'll have to see with the tailwind. It's good for him, but we'll have to see if he'll, if he'll make it to the line. I really hope Actually, he does. Do you think he could attack over the pot? You're on the descent. We, we know he's a master descender. He's an yeah. amazing descender. And, uh, you know, I love the pot. So those last 10, 15 minutes, my favorite of the whole season. I know, I know what it is. Yeah. And, the 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 hairpin turns down yep. the down the pocket again. Amazing watch. Yeah. Every time. And yeah. Sean is a master defender. You think he could do it early? I think it's it's a good point. Uh we saw him uh attacking on the descendant in Paris Nice for stage five, I think. He's a good descender. And I mean if he can just, you know, just before the, the top of the climb, perhaps the favorite says a small small gap between the favorites and the peloton and he just comes full gas definitely he could have i would say around five seconds at the bottom uh depending on who is uh, chasing him uh in the favorites group and five seconds for is it two 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 and a half kilometers something like that yeah. from the bottom of the pokio i mean if it's mano a mano one is chasing, Sean Kao is going for the line. I think uh, I think it's it's plausible he could win. So his his plan attack. This is his best chance of winning. Um, I, and you mentioned the, there's some strong teams here. And who's going to catch him if he goes and gets five seconds? Uh, Roglic? No, I don't think he can. No, really, uh, I don't not on the flat. And if Ghana is there, sure for some pit guard, but yeah. will he? Don't know right maybe he joined the move you don't even know yeah. but but it, it's it's really a good question because there's there's so many things that has to fall into place of course for this to work yeah but it it could happen it and could. we know he's gonna do it yeah <laughs> it's like you know pushing the button you can see yeah. him all of a sudden he just he launches exactly and it's too much every time i i hope he wins uh, let's uh, proceed to michael matthews um yeah. i mean Actually. it's a it's a good race for him simply because it's it has become a race too hard for the pure sprinters and too hard for the climbers and he kind of fits in that little uh that little gap there he should should survive the pokio but you know i've rarely seen him attack in the final he trusts the sprints mm. and if we go with the he has a lot scenario. of second and, and third places, right? Yeah, he has. Yeah, he has good results here. I think he has 
two podiums here, but it's just hard to see him beating either Wout van Aert or Mass Peterson in a sprint. And I can't see him dropping them. So, I mean, he'll be up there hoping for a podium finish, but, but that's about it. Um, yeah, I, I agree. I was thinking, could he maybe do the move? He has a really good short time trial. <clears throat> time trial. It's true. Sorry. Um, but nah, I agree with you. There will be yeah. other guys who that. Yeah, he he so, always he always trusts his sprint and always yeah. comes fall short. Um, yeah. On to Peter Sagan. Let's talk a bit about this guy. For the past yeah. few years, he has not been the same rider as we've known him. I mean, he changed the way of cycling for me. Very, very, very good rider. Um, hasn't been the same after his divorce with his wife. That's at least my theory. But the last two editions, twice, fourth. That means he, he makes the split. He's a good sprinter after a hot day. And I mean... It's a bit sad that I didn't get the uh, Cesarish result in here, but you know he's very consistent in this race. It doesn't matter uh, what time of year, the weather. It's just a good race for him. And I mean, had he ever, you know, still been the same Peter Sagan, and we suddenly didn't have Wout van Aert or Mathieu van der Poel, um, I mean, he could probably have won this race like four or five times. That that would not have been insane to say. Five years so, ago, so he's a, he's a great finisher and he's an amazing descender. Mm -hmm. And to me, it is a tragedy that he has not won it because he has had the chance when um, Siolek beat him, yeah. and Kiatowski has beaten him too. Yeah, the the, the free free guy sprint with the uh, him with Kowski and uh, Ala Philippe. Yeah, yes. he's had the chance, but he's very consistent here. Very very consistent. Yeah. So good a good bet for a top ten, maybe a top five. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if you can get like, I know sometimes you can bet on top, is it top six somewhere on top 10? Yeah, uh, maybe in Belgium. <laughs> yeah, perhaps in Belgium, but I mean, Sakan, he, he should be up there for consideration. Mm. Then we have oh, Pitcock. Yeah, little Tommy, Pitcock. Yeah. His, I, main, uh, his main goal was Karte right? Yeah, out there. it was. And he uh, sickness kept him out of it. Um, you know, all these riders getting the flu uh, in the beginning of the um, the, the season. Um, he missed just three, four training days. So it's not like a, a major, major setback. Um, and I watched the, um, the final from last year. He was in the group uh, with Kwiatkowski. They had two riders and it's not often you see a team have um, more than one option at the bottom of the podium. But he tried to attack to, I can't remember if it was before or after Steuven attacked. Well, actually, he, he attacked after Søren Kral, I think. Yeah, he tried, yeah, he tried to bridge across, right? Uh, yeah, um, yeah, no, I, I really don't remember. But, yeah. but there was a, a move and Wout closed him down immediately yeah, and yeah. he just set up. Yeah. And then I think maybe Søren went, I think that was... Yeah, uh, so, you know... <sighs> He's super fast. I really, I really hope he will trust his sprint because he is very, very quick for a guy of his stature. Um, we'll have to see. I mean, if he's in good shape, which I think he is, they won't drop him on the Bokyo. It's, it's a climb which is too easy. But we'll have to see him in a sprint. He hasn't really sprinted this year. Um, he almost beat, beat Bart van Aert uh, last year. Or he beat him or there's something with the finish line. Uh, oh, he won Barbat, Barbat to pale and then no sound, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By one, yeah. one millimeter or something like that. So he is, he is very fast. Um, yeah. He also, Ineos, we mentioned him. I think they also want to make it as hard as possible. I think perhaps Pitcock fancies his chances against Wout van Aert in a sprint. He would much rather have that scenario than sprinting against Mass Peterson. That's my that's my theory for Ineos. That's why the problem. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I think Ineos they will they have a very good um, sense of when to in the valley between the Cipressa and Popio, when to hit the front. So they make sure the riders are at the front and they can react to attacks. It's it's a very good team with them. 
uh, and I think he he will be up there. I I, I think he's at a hundred percent really. He is a world class rider when he's at his best. So uh, even at ninety five percent, he he could uh, easily go go over the top with the meeting after yeah. this. Yes. And we're going uh, to talk about Primoz Roglic. That's a bit of uh, my uh, input here. Is he just a lieutenant for Mount Van Aert? I have a feeling that um, they can't really drop Mass Peterson. Uh, and that's going to be a problem at the bottom of the Bokyo, which perhaps changes the race dynamics. And we've seen Jumbo Visma. They, um, they win races because they're smart and also because they have some of the best riders in the world, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's in fantastic shape. Um, and as I mentioned, it just leaves them with two options at the bottom of the Bokyo. What do you think of, of Jumbo Visma? Could they have more than uh, more than one option? I like Laporte, I really do. But at the same time, I think maybe he has to pull on um, on the part of pace before attack. But Primoz Roglic is is very interesting for this because he could try and do move at the yeah. bottom, and he's not slow. He's fast. He can he can win a sprint uh, just by sitting on and, and beating on the line. But I'm not sure. I I, I gotta I gotta say, if, if I were a TJV, I would probably use him uh, yeah. on Poggio, and then I would use uh, Laporte as a, as an attacking option or as a guy who pulls in for Vout. Yeah. After that, right? Yeah. Or maybe all both of them could do that. But I just think this is a world class rider. Absolutely, he's in fantastic shape. Mm -hmm. That it fits Laporte better. I, I, that's that's just what I think. All right. Um, but it, it is not going to matter anyway when Sean is gone. That's yeah. That's that's probably true. <laughs> that's probably true. Yeah. But uh, they have options, really. Oh, yeah. here we have my man, Jesper Philipsen. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You doubt he will make it over the podium? Yeah. yeah. He will not be in the front group after the podium. I I can't see it. It's going to be difficult. But maybe if Van der Poel he. Uh, carries him a little bit. Do you think he will be able to help him at all? Mm, we'll have to see. I mean, Mathieu van der Poel here after a long break. Um, I mean, if it comes back together, I mean, the smaller the group that goes over the top, the smaller the chance for that front group to get to the line. So we'll have to see if it comes back together. I mean, he is a classic rider too, Philipsen. Um, I can climb a little bit. Yeah, but I, I, I think that He's become faster and thereby not come as good as a climber as he as he probably was before. Uh, but we'll have to see. We will have to see. He'll probably be a very good contender to win the, the bunch sprint behind them. But I simply, simply doubt he'll make it over the podium. If he does, then we have, you know, uh, a whole a whole other scenario at the bottom, because then you, you probably both have out an art. Pitcock, uh, Mass Peterson, and uh, and and Philipson. I don't know if I mentioned him already, but you'll have four sprinters, and no one wants to who's bring them fastest? to the. Yeah, who's the fastest? Yeah, I'll 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 go with Mass Peterson. Simply because of the length, the form, yeah. uh, and the tailwind, which means hmm. that whenever he opens up too early, I mean it's not going to be that much of a problem. It's probably just going to be better. Um, yeah, yeah. And I think I have one more rider from Alpecin Phoenix here. I do. The amazing Matthew van der Poel. Yeah. Uh, out of nowhere, last night, I'm coming. I'm going to I'm gonna race the MSR. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Um, How is it? Um, it's a training ride for him. Um, they're saying, you know, I think so too. It's it's very difficult to to really perform well after a long long break um, without racing, you know, sitting in the peloton. That, but you know, he's just such a classy rider, and I yeah. think it's uh, is it eighty percent of all the monuments he's done or something like that. He's finished top five or something. It's that's that is absolutely crazy. I mean, he can he is such a fantastic rider, but I I just hope to get a good. You know, he gives me a good feeling about him, you know, ahead of uh, Flandern and Aubé. That's, that's all I hope for. I 
I mean, if he was in, in, in very good shape, he could probably win. Uh, but yeah, I, I think perhaps he'll just need that that little that little little kick, the, the few extra percent it takes to win. So you don't think they were going are going to use him as some kind of a decoy um earlier in the race, maybe under the pressure. Yeah. I'll we'll just be kind of on the polar Polish <laughs> to do that. I was just about to say you, you never really know what to expect from him, right? I mean he's no. He's a rider. I think that when he when he's on the bike in the race, and he he has a his, he listens to his gut, right? If he says yeah. if he feels okay, I should attack here. He will do it. It's not that much about tactics and waiting. It's about you know, you know, just just riding in a chaotic way almost. But yeah. I hope I hope I hope he will finish in in a good position but it's also likely that it's it's perhaps too early for him and we'll see a a, a drop did not finish um i think it's possible i don't have high hopes for him um i i just hope that is it in a month uh three weeks perhaps we start getting the two three weeks that's that's where i think he'll be about to be ready and if he's not ready there i think he'll give it a go at the age on the age and uh, mm. The Aden Classics uh, could probably, yeah. I mean, if the form is not there, you could try to push the, the schedule just a little bit and perform quite well there, I can imagine. Sure. Um, going to talk a bit about Matej Mohoric. It's a yes. rider I love. I really love Matej Mohoric. Uh, crashed out of Stradivianke, which was just shame. He was one of my favorites. Yeah. Talked a bit about the descent. He's a fantastic yeah, yeah. too. Probably yeah. one of the one best. Of the, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then this little curiosity. Official role, a uh, role, a uh, road captain. Uh, yeah. I know mentioned to me earlier that they have an Italian captain on the line. What's yeah. That yeah, it's 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 about uh, Caruso. Uh, I think yeah. being the he's, I mean he's riding quite real, uh, did it in Tireno at the article, but I mean is this just you know are they playing with our minds here? I think they are. I'm not going to buy Matej Mohoric as a road captain for Milano San Remo. Uh, he won two stages in the Tour de France last year. What they had in common, they were both over 200 and was it 30, 230 kilometers. The longer the race, the better he gets. It's, 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 it's a simple formula. Um, he has been in the front group. I made the split twice, I think. Uh, he's a fantastic rider, but... You know, with so many good riders here in very good shape and we have yeah. riders coming back after a crash or illness, it's 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 hard really to think they will win because some others... There are some question marks uh, with yeah. his form and, and exactly. his health as well. But I agree with you, if he's on, on 100%, he is one of the guys who can can slingshot it down the podio and just... Never be seen again. He is. Yeah. And he's also he, he's not slow, right? He, no, 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 no. And group, he can sprint a little bit. Yeah, he can. Reminds me a little bit of Don Carl in that regard. Okay, yeah. so quick step. Uh, the biggest classics team uh, historically, I think, the last 20 years. Yep. Um, but no, Ala Philippe, they are bringing Fabio Jacobs instead. Yeah. You think he, I don't think yeah. he's going to win it. No, I mean a wise man. He wants he wants road. Uh, that's whenever you start writing a preview, you have to ask yourself what will Quicks to do. Um, yeah. We look at the team. I see Jakobsen, the fastest man uh, on two wheels. I see a strong classics team. I see Cavagna and Cataneo, both with good time trial capabilities. Cavagna back after I think it was an operation. Uh, probably not in, in peak form. And I see Bajoli could possibly make it over the Porto 2. But this this team, will they go all out for Jakobsen? I, I doubt it. I, I doubt it. I hope they will, you know, just do what the quick step do when they do it best. Attack, attack, attack. And just hope it will pay off. Um, they will you not see a guy like uh, like Florian Seneschal go go over the top of the podium at, at the front. He's mm. fast. He's very fast. I haven't really. He was 
it was okay in the in the opening weekend um but i mean it's i don't really have high hopes for them i mean send shell from a small group hard man to beat but someone should still be faster right yeah Not i think, I think if, if you can make it over the if you can make it over the podium with the front group is a, like we talked about the slingshot down from the descent mm. into the tailwind and off it goes it's it's plausible but i think it's i think it's a bit unlikely um yep. I think perhaps their best shot is actually to ride for Fabio Jakobsen and hope he makes it. I mean, if they have, let's say, five, four or five guys with them after the podio, mm. um, and they are starting to play games at the front, I mean, it's 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 another scenario. You never know. That's that's why we love Milano and Raymond because you don't know. Is it two man over podio? Is it twelfth man? Um, mm. You just don't really know. Uh, what do what do you think of that team? What would you do if you were the uh, sports director of uh, Quickstep mm, uh, Alpha Vinyl yeah. for tomorrow? Um, I I tried to position Andrea Bajuli at the front um, at the foot of the podium, and maybe try and anticipate a little bit with a guy like Stiba if he has the form or Mikkel Honoré. I don't think he has the form, but uh, it could be something. Bajuli mm, in a flat sprint won't win. Um, yeah. but he can get a result for them. And yeah. Jakobsen, I just, I don't think he can survive the podium the way he has been climbing uh, lately. Uh, as you say, he is the fastest man on two wheels, no doubt in my mind. So if it just becomes um, a peloton sprint, he should win it. Yeah. Maybe Mesh still has a chance, but but it yeah. should be. Right? Yeah. yeah, it should be. Uh... So I agree with you. I, I think maybe... Yeah, that is the best tactic. Try and hold it together. But who who's gonna help them? Yeah. Right? Who wants That's... to spend the Alpine? Mm, fine. Mm. Who more? No yeah, more. exactly. I mean we have we have we already mentioned it. We have the three strongest team. They don't want to see Jakobsen within ten miles uh, over the <laughs> <laughs> I mean no. they, they want him gone and I think they'll get what they want. So yeah, it's, it'll be interesting to see, but it's, I, it's I, I cannot believe I cannot believe they didn't bring the test bike thing. I cannot believe it. No, I that's... think this is a great race for him too to, to yeah. do the the stick away, and he's yeah. pretty fast. I agree. I cannot believe. But okay, fine, fine. Yeah. He's just going to do the double. Uh, uh, Ube, uh, yeah, the, then then you'll be okay, and you will. Uh... <laughs> yes, uh, I won't be sad anymore. <laughs> All right, great. Yeah. Let's talk about the favorites a bit. Wout van Aert, the top yes. favorite. Uh, mm. Fantastic shape. You can't drop mm. him on the podium and he's very fast. Nope. <laughs> um, he's very fast. We all uh, know him. Great Amazing. Amazing effort he did for Roglic. Yeah. Um, it's it's going to be hard to beat him. Um, it, it simply is, especially with that team. Um, mm. We mentioned, or at least we'll do it now, there's a certain Dane who we know, if he's in a group with uh, Wout van Aert, who can beat him. Yeah. And that's uh, our very own Mass Peterson. Um, it's so in Paris. Yeah. And Pitcock, a bit of a, I don't know, I'd probably, probably give the, the edge a bit to Wout van Aert just because of his form. And Pitcock has been out with sickness since Strad Bianca. Uh, yeah. He has a great All team. All the races that hard, right? So, Maybe about top speed it will be better. Yeah. Is it uh, close yeah. Top top favorite. Then we have Mass Peterson, fastest man among the favorites after a long hard day. He just gets better. The longer the race, the longer the one day race, the better he gets. Um, yeah, we saw it when he got second behind the um, was it Tapra in in Ronde. He yeah. was out there all day. He just sat. Like 100, 100 meters, maybe 200 meters in front of the chasing group. Yeah. He just did that 15. Uh, just yeah. mauling those battles almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I he, guess a big engine. He's looking good ahead of the uh, the big classic races. Um, yeah. Uh, the problem is, as of right now, we're recording. Um, they haven't um, published their full team, and I'm sorry. 
Uh, I normally don't do previews before I have the starters, but it's less than uh, a day before uh, the first yeah. monument, and we still have teams not um, not publishing their their teams, uh, which I think is it's it's very irritating uh, when you're uh, writing previews that they don't do it, um, and I think he will he will hope for a reduced punch print. When I say reduced punch print, I mean uh, a sprint amongst the favorites. He, he, do, he doesn't want Jakobsen there uh, either. Um, and um, the last one, probably the best rider in the world right now, the Slovenian, Tadej Bogaccia. What can you say about him, Peter? To me, he's, I'm calling him the, the boat, the best of all time. And I know that's dangerous because there are errors, okay? But he is the best rider I've ever seen. So let me just leave it at that. It, no one can touch Pogaccia when he's in top shape. And that's also the only reason he has a, a chance to win this race. Yeah, mm -hmm. he does have a chance to win it because he's just so good. He violently attacks when he wants yeah. and he doesn't run out of fuel. It seems that he's unbeatable at this time. But in this race, uh, I don't think he will win it, but I think he can. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Um... UAE, they have a good uh, good climbing squad here. They have the likes of uh, Kovi, Ulisi. Uh, just to mention some of them, they will make it hard on Cipresa. They'll make it hard on Pocho. It has to be as hard as possible. I think we'll probably see some of the fastest climbing times of, of both climbs. Um, mm -hmm. That's his best, best chance to win. And he's quicker than you think on the line. I mean, it's not like he's this fantastic GC rider who doesn't have a sprint. I mean, he he almost beat Bart Van Aert for a silver medal at the Olympics last year. Um, he's very quick, very very quick. Um, but I think he he also wants. Uh, I think he can win a sprint from a small group. He doesn't want Mess Peterson uh, against Bart Van Aert. I mean, it was close, but I will still give the edge to Bart Van Aert. If they go up against it, I think Wout will win more than he will lose if, if they do it 10 times. Um, but he's in fantastic shape. And I mean, yeah, he would be up there. That's that's who, just... who they are bet against him, right? Who they are bet against yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Absolutely destroyed everyone in Tileno. That was yeah. I... Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I I I was oh. I was getting flashbacks when I saw that that mountain stage that I was thinking, Vingico, why don't you just follow him? You know, from last year at the Tour de France, the others, they don't have anything left if they don't follow him. But when he got to the bottom, Vingico, and, and I do love his interviews, he just said, hey, he was just better today. So, I mean, he's just fantastic form. He's winning everything at the moment. Um, and this oh, preview is about what about them Danes. Unfortunately, yeah. um, we don't have a lot of Danes starting tomorrow. We already mentioned Mads Peterson. We already talked about Sean Kao. Yeah. And then we have uh, Miki Honore. Miki. Yeah, domestic duty. Maybe maybe if he has suddenly found some, some, some great shape, maybe he could be the guy uh, over the podium. I don't think so. He no. hasn't looked informed so far. But he has, he has the qualities to do it. Um, I think it will be difficult for him to... To do anything big in this race. Uh, I like the, the guy in the middle and the guy in the Yeah, yeah, those are uh, probably the the two best calls uh, we as Danes can uh, can can say to you. Um, it's great having two two uh, two of the favorites for a race like this. That's amazing. Like yeah, they are. Ago, yeah. We didn't have anyone. Oh, we had no. Jakob Pulsa. Yeah, that's true. Okay. But not for races like these, right? And now we no, no, no. Like so, yeah. yeah. And we. Okay. We're going to talk a bit about my my final prediction, and yep. some people will uh, think I'm mental. I think, uh, but let's get on with it. Um, I see a group of eight to twelve people at the bottom of the bucket. That's not unlikely, not at all. Someone will attack. We have perhaps said it already. Uh, Sean Kao Anderson, he will make a yep. move. Uh, fantastic form, big engine. Um, he almost. Managed to do it last year. He will do it again. I think he's looking better this year than last year, which means that the attack will be even better. I think Jumbo Visma will have two options at the bottom. 
or Klitsch and Wout van Aert. You think it's going to be Laporte and Wout van Aert, or perhaps all three? I, I hope it will be. I hope it will be. Yeah. But yeah, it could, might as well could be Wout. Yeah. yeah. So what I would do here is get Primoz Roglic to follow the move, which is likely going to be from San Kram. Make him follow moves, let him sit on wheels. If he's sitting on the wheel of San Kram, sprints, San Kram has to pull. I mean, Primus Roglic, he's not, he's not a slow rider either. He's got a fast sprint. Yep. Um, and and San Kram, he, he also has quite a good sprint, but I'm not sure. I mean, if, if San Kram has been pulling for the last two kilometers or something like that, mm. Roglic will be more fresh. That's that's my theory, at least. And it also gives Wout van Aert an armchair ride to the finish. Hmm. If Roglic is in front, the others only have one. That means either Tadej Pogacar, Mas Peterson, simply because he might be the fastest people will look to him. They will have to work, which gives Wout van Aert even a better shot at winning the race, right? I mean, if both of them can use the numerical advantage to sit on wheels, I mean, it's it's win-win in my head. At, at least that's how I hope it will play out. Or at least he will have to anticipate this moment. Um, and I think he will out-sprint San Carlos and win Milano San Remo. So I think it will be... I, I don't think they will work together behind. I, I, I doubt it. If, if San Kao and Roglic goes, there will be a group behind which are starting to look at each other. We see it, they hesitate for five seconds, it's too late. Um, so yep. my prediction, and this is a Danish uh, podcast video preview, we have to, so my prediction is actually, we'll have Primoz Roglic winning, unfortunately, mm -hmm. Søren Kravnesen finishing just behind him, and Mads Peterson finishing third. Yep. That's, that's, that's my prediction. Wout van Aert just behind him again. Uh, behind Mas Peterson. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with the coward move here. I'm going to say everything you just said. Yeah. But then Ghana pulls uh, pulls them in and yeah. Mas opens the 300 and wins on the line. Okay. That's, All right. that's my prediction. All right. Um, so we uh, will talk a bit about some bets. Yep. Peter, you want yep. to go ahead? Yeah, sure. It's it's a bit difficult uh, because you, you never know if a rider will, will abandon. So be careful with your money. Uh, don't yeah. waste it. Uh, and you would um, some places do void, some do not. Okay. So yesterday, Mass Peterson, I, I I was at a concert actually, and I just I got a message. Mass Peterson will ride Milan San Remo one time. Okay, fine. And then I I thought maybe he will open at like nine or something like that. And he did, and I, was, I, I almost couldn't believe it because I, I actually think he's one of the very, very big favorites here. Uh, I also like Juan at six, but I like Matthias at nine better. Yeah. And I can see, uh, I can see that it's now dropped to a more sensible level, maybe. Yeah. Six. Yeah. 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 But so that's, I'm, that's, I'm also for. Yeah, I'm also for Matt Peterson. Uh, if it comes down to a sprint. I mean, the scenario attacks, uh, will it come back? I mean, Mas Peterson should be the fastest in that group. Um, he's faster than Rob van Aert, and I don't think they can drop him. It's We, we agree on this. I mean, it, it's a good bet. Uh, then you go with uh, a Spaniard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I think this guy is, um, is going to make the move. Hmm? Uh, no, he's going to make the selection. I'm sorry, yeah. he's going to make the selection. And I think he is a guy who could go with Sean when Sean attacks. I yeah. think he can, and, and then he can beat him on the line easy. I think so. Uh, at sixty-seven, that's that's pretty good. I think. Um, yeah. I, I maybe I do like the top three better, yeah. which is I believe seventeen. Yeah, it sounds about right. Yeah. So uh, so that's I, I think that's pretty high for a guy like Adam Buru, mm. who has a, a really strong finish. Yeah. And and we have seen him slip away. Uh, before yeah to win yeah and then you have, then you have uh, a swiss engine at the bottom yeah yeah these are I, i'm not even sure he's gonna start but I, I was looking a little bit around and i saw 201 for a guy like him yeah if he makes the selection he's a prime candidate too and we know he's also fast yeah so i think that was very high uh, and of course if, if he doesn't start and it's worthless it gets voided whatever but yeah. I think it's it's a little, little shot um, for Bissager, who who's a, just a class rider. He's mm. moving nice and 
and slowly you know progressing in real life i think yeah 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 he won a a breakaway victory a sprint in uh, was it to the woman d or yeah i think yeah, so I think last so. year yeah. on a rainy day yeah. uh um, and he's 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 got a big engine, and he's, he's I mean it's 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 high price. They haven't selected anything EF Education. We might oh. even we could hope to see Michael Valkyrie, but yep. let's see what they find out. We'll we'll leave him a comment on on Twitter if he doesn't talk about his chances. Uh, yeah. I'm also on on Mass Peterson. Simply mm -hmm. drop down to seven. I think it's mm. it, it, if it goes lower than this, then probably not. I mean, uh, so many yeah. different things can happen. Then I'm on Søren Krav Andersen. He currently he went from 17 to 21 over the last few days, which I don't really understand. Um, and simply because he knows what it takes to make it to the line. He almost did it last year. If you've okay. watched Paris Nice, you know he's in good shape. And the tailwind um, to the finish from the bottom of the podio, it's going to make it so much easier for uh, a solo victory, like we saw last yep. year. And then, yep. as my prediction, <laughs> Primoz Roglic, uh, I think it's quite a good price. I mean, of course, perhaps it's an unlikely scenario, but I think I think that's how they should play their cards at Jumbo Visma. Don't just... Uh, if you compare it to Pogaccia, who is like five or something like that, yeah. that is a lot. Yeah, because they're, they're quite equal and... In, in a sprint against each other, perhaps Bogaccio gets a slight edge for me, uh, but he Roglic is, is mighty fast on a flat sprint too. If it gets you know very 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 selective uh, with a very small group going over, and with them having two cars to play, I simply think it's it would be stupid if Jumbo Visma just gets at the bottom of the Pokio. Roglic just does a two kilometer TT for Wout van Aert. It's Hmm. I mean, there will be riders like Pitcock, Peterson, Aaron Buru. You mentioned him. He's also quite fast. Sagan, Matthews. You know, it's 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 a lot of quite good sprints. It's 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 a lot of X to just throw it at Wout van Aert. And I I wouldn't do it if they are both there at the bottom of the book. Hmm. All right. So uh, that sums it up for us, actually. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, we we went a little. Uh... How, how long have we been recording? Like 40 minutes? Something yeah, like that? something like that. Um, yeah, which I've shown it down, but there's just a lot to talk about because of all these what ifs. Yeah, like exactly. It, it, it's, so, it's, a race, uh, it's a race where you don't really know what's going to happen. You can't really just say, here, these riders will attack and they'll make it to the line. Uh, or you say, this is going to be a bunch print and then analyze the final. Uh, it's the first monument, so it also deserves just a bit of uh, yeah, time to talk about, really. That's true. That's true. Okay, so it has been a pleasure, uh, Chris. Yeah. Thanks for doing this. With me. It's, uh, it's it's very interesting. Let's, let's try and see if we can do some more for for the bigger races, like uh, Ronde or Ronde or something like yeah. that. Yeah, I hope we In have more case, more Danes there. Yeah, that's, yeah, more Danes. The more the merrier, right? How about the more the merrier? So, uh, thank you for watching, and uh, see you again. Yeah, thank you for listening and watching.